Most cameras on the market will suffer from hot pixels, no matter how expensive or new your camera is, but each and every camera is different. Hot pixels present themselves as red, green, or blue bright dots, particularly in the shadow areas of your image. Now, you can combat this by turning on long exposure noise reduction in your camera, but it doesn't always do a perfect job, and it also means that you have to wait twice the length of your shutter speed for a single image. So if you're taking a three minute exposure of your foreground, you have to wait six minutes for that image. And this is why I always leave that setting off so that I can spend more time in the field capturing images. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques to remove hot pixels from your images without losing any detail. So let's start with this example. It's a single exposure of 25 seconds taken with a Sony a7 IV at the iconic Delicate Arch in Utah. Now I've done some basic adjustments here. So I've done a plus three on the exposure because I was shooting at ISO 800. Now this is only recommended if your camera exhibits ISO invariant behavior. And if you don't know what ISO invariance is, I have an entire video on my YouTube channel about what ISO invariance is and why it's so useful. But the basic adjustments I've done here is I've lowered the highlights to darken the sky, and I've lifted the shadows and lifted the blacks to unveil some detail from the dark foreground. But if I zoom in, you'll notice that there's a lot of hot pixels going on. You can see red, blue, green hot pixels. And if I come down into the detail tab, um, if I increase the color slider, that actually removes the color from the hot pixels, but you've still got these speckles all over your image, which is not great. And removing the colors from the hot pixels doesn't really have any benefit for us. And in the technique that I'll show at the end of the video, it's actually a bad idea to remove the color. If I lower the color slider, you'll see there's a lot of color noise in the shadows and Lightroom's default setting of 25 actually does a pretty good job of cleaning up most of the color noise in the shadows. And before I go into Photoshop, I am gonna do some basic noise reduction. So just increase the slider until you've got rid of a lot of the noise, but you're not doing too much so that you're losing detail and the image looks smudged and painterly. So I think somewhere around 20 is good for this image. And now we're gonna take the image and go edit in Photoshop. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer to work on by pressing Command and J or Control and J if you're on Windows. Another way to duplicate the layer is to click and drag the layer onto the new layer button in the bottom right corner and that creates a duplicate layer, but I don't need that because I've already got a duplicate layer. And I'm just gonna zoom in to 100% by pressing Command and one or Control and one on Windows. That allows us to see the hot pixels a bit better. And then I'm gonna to come to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. Now you can see that with a radius of one, that's actually got rid of quite a lot of the pixels, but there's still a few stubborn pixels there. So I'm gonna increase the radius to two. And that's done a better job. Now it's got rid of 99% of the hot pixels, apart from this stubborn one here, which I can fix manually anyway. Now, when you do dust and scratches, you actually lose a lot of detail. Um, there's not a lot on display in this image, but to recover that detail, you basically increase the threshold slider. And you do that, but don't do it too much so that you start unveiling hot pixels again, or you start revealing noise that we've already just removed. So I usually find myself somewhere between 15 and 20 for my astro images, but it might be different for you. So I think, yeah, somewhere about there. We've recovered a bit of detail. We haven't brought back any hot pixels or too much extra noise. So somewhere around there is good for me. Now, if I zoom out to fit to the screen by pressing Command and Zero or Control and Zero, and I turn this layer on and off so you can see before and after, Hopefully you can see that it's affected the stars as well. And I'll zoom back into 100%. And that's after, that's before, that's after. You can actually see that it's removed a lot of the stars because they are also considered sort of dust and scratches. Now you might like this effect. A lot of astrophotographers, myself included, will use star reduction techniques to make the image feel less noisy and less busy and to help the main constellation stand out a bit better. But I'm gonna show you a way to remove the effect from the sky. So first we need a layer mask by pressing this button here. And then I'm gonna take a brush or you can press B for brush. I've got a black brush. The mode is normal. 
100% opacity, you can change the opacity if you like. And then when you brush, you actually remove the effect. And just a side note here, when you're painting black onto a layer mask, just make sure the layer mask is active. You'll see these white lines around the corners, that tells you that that layer is active. That's the layer that you're painting on. A lot of people will accidentally uh, still have the image layer active and when they paint black, they actually paint onto the image itself, which is not what we want. So make sure that you're working on um, the, the layer mask and you're removing uh, the effect that way. But as you can see, sometimes you might brush over the lines and I've accidentally brought back some hot pixels here and um, painting the whole sky manually um, is a bit of a chore. So there's a much easier and quicker way to do it. So first I'm gonna delete this layer mask and then I'm just gonna select this here, the quick selection tool. You might have to right mouse click so that you can find it here behind the magic wand or the object selection tool, but just the quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna brush over the foreground and you can see that ooh, it automatically selects the foreground pretty well. Just gonna draw a little line over the person and you can see it's got a really good rough selection of the foreground. And if I zoom in, we can actually refine the selection by coming to Select and Mask, choosing the Refine Edge Brush tool, and just brush it here to tell Photoshop, hey, do a better job of finding the edges here. And you can see it's made a much better selection now. So I'm just gonna press OK, zoom out to fit to page. And now with this selection active, now I'm gonna add a layer mask by pressing this button here. And you can see the layer mask has a white for the foreground and black for the sky. So wherever it's black, this layer is not visible. Wherever it's white, this layer is visible. So if I just show the layer mask, the hot pixel reduction that we did on this layer is only gonna be visible where the mask is white. So if I zoom back into 100%, show you a before and after. You can see the hot pixels are only being removed from the foreground and the sky is not being affected. Now with this layer active, I'm gonna have a little look because I can see there's a hot pixel there still. So I'm gonna to come to the spot healing brush tool and I could just get rid of that manually. Have a little look, see if there's any more. One there, one there. There's only a few to clean up. So doing this manually is not a big chore. But what if we have an extreme amount of hot pixels that don't get removed by this technique? Before I show you how to do that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where people from over 150 different countries come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are classes on freelancing, business, graphic design, photography, videography, basically anything creative that you can think of. If you're enjoying this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the astrophotography content on Skillshare, especially Ian Norman's class on Nightscapes. It's a great introduction to the foundational knowledge you need for landscape astrophotography. I've been using Skillshare for a few years now and I've used it for all sorts of things. Tips on getting clients as a freelancer, tips for running my business, even things like videography, editing, and it's where I learned the skills so I can create the intro to my astro vlog series which people absolutely love. If you'd like to join along, the first thousand people to follow the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. You can access all of the courses, as many as you want. Give them all a try. You can even download them for offline viewing later on. And if you're enjoying Skillshare and you wanna continue that creative journey, the annual subscription is surprisingly affordable. So follow the link in the description down below perfect a new hobby, maybe land a new career, or even start your own business. And thanks Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so some of you might be expecting the next technique to be dark frame subtraction. This is actually what your camera does when you turn on long exposure noise reduction. You basically capture a dark frame, which is a frame with the exact same shutter speed and ISO setting and temperature as your light frame, but you put the shutter cap on. So you're taking an exposure without collecting any light, and it basically creates an image or a map of the thermal noise and the hot pixels at the sensor. This is a dark frame. Then you can subtract the dark frame from the light frame, and in theory, that basically removes the thermal noise and the hot pixels from the light frame. Now it doesn't always work perfectly and I'll save it for another video 
Or if you're interested to learn more, you can check out my book, Photographing the Night Sky. It's the encyclopedic guide to landscape astrophotography. But I'm gonna show you another method that we can use to remove hot pixels when they're a bit more stubborn. So I have this image here taken with a 50 millimeter lens and it was captured for three minutes. So the hot pixels are a bit more extreme than the previous example. And it was also very hot on this night in Utah and cameras produce more hot pixels the hotter they get. So you can just see the sheer amount of hot pixels here. It's pretty intense. So first I'm gonna create a duplicate by pressing Command and J. I'm gonna come up to Filter, Noise. Uh, I'm gonna do Dust and Scratches. Use the same settings as last time. Radius of two, threshold of 15. And you can see that's got rid of a lot of the hot pixels without losing any detail. If I lower the threshold, you'll see that this filter actually does soften the image and lose a lot of detail. So just increasing the threshold brings back that detail, but we don't want to do it too far so that we bring back any hot pixels and noise. So I'm just going to stick with 15 for now. And as you can see, if I zoom in, you'll see it a lot better. There's still quite a lot of stubborn hot pixels, particularly blue and also red. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find you know, just a typical hot pixel, an average of all the hot pixels we can see. I'm going to zoom right into the pixel level. And I'm going to come up to select color range and started with this eyedropper tool here. This makes a new selection. I'm going to start here and choose that blue color. Then I'm going to choose the add eyedropper and choose a few more of these blue tones extending right up to the edge. I'm going to keep selecting those. And then once you've done that, you want to play with the fuzziness until you can start to see that it's selecting the hot pixels in the foreground. If you go too far, you're going to start selecting stars in the sky and all sorts of stuff. So you just want to make sure that it's mostly black with some white dots in the foreground region of the image. So somewhere about there is good for me. Now you can see that that pixel has been selected. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that it's selected all of those blue hot pixels. Now it's worth zooming out to make sure you haven't selected something that you don't want to select. Maybe there's like a building in the image with some blue lights on. If that's the case, you can just select the polygonal lasso tool. Come here to subtract from selection. And uh, let's say you didn't want to remove this area here. You could just do that and that removes it from the selection. Uh, in this case, I've selected just hot pixels, but if there was something I didn't want to remove, I would just use this little tool to remove it from the selection before moving forward. And zooming in, what I'm gonna do now is come to edit, fill, and then make sure that contents is on content aware. Leave all of these settings as they are, press okay. Depending on how fast your computer is, this might take a little while, so be patient with it. And now it's finished, I can remove the selection by pressing Command and D, or Control and D on the Windows with Deselect. And that's got rid of all of those blue pixels now. And I'll do the same for the reds here as well. So I'll just find a red pixel to work from. Let's go with this one. Select, color range, new selection with this red. I'm gonna add a few more colors to do with this red. Now you can see from the preview, I've selected quite a lot of the image because a lot of the image is red. So we're gonna have to bring the fuzziness down until most of the image is black and we've just got some of those spots. And that seems to have done fairly decent selection. And one thing you can do to improve the selection is come to select, modify, expand, change it by two to four pixels. I'm just gonna go with three and then come to select, modify, Feather, and just feather it by one to two pixels just to soften the selection. And then we're gonna do the same again. Edit, fill, content away. And hopefully that will remove all of these red hot pixels that are lurking in the shadows. Again, I'm gonna press Command and D or Control and D to get rid of the selection. And now you can see we've got rid of all of those hot pixels. We've still got lovely detail including in these amazing petroglyphs here. So if I just show you the before and the after, 
she has done an amazing job of cleaning up the image and making it so much more aesthetically pleasing. So I hope you found this video useful guys and if you have make sure to hit subscribe for more astrophotography content and don't forget to check out my book or my 2023 what's in the night sky calendar which has significant astronomical events pre-written in there so you don't miss an event. There'll be links in the video description down below. Thanks for tuning in to another video and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon I wish you good luck and clear skies. Thank <laughs> you.